Good afternoon. My name is Tahir Aikrashi. I'm a fellow of Rules Institute of Canada and broker of record for City Priority Inc. Brokerage. And I am your host for our uh, 40th Global Connectivity Conference uh, on real estate. And um, we're going to start our conversation. I do a small presentation. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. So I'm going to share my screen to start the presentation. Lots of things happen. I am now uh, a, a, a licensed builder in the province of Ontario to custom design homes. So we have a real estate brokerage, we have a mortgage brokerage, and we are now a licensed builder. So that's a good news. And we're going to start now our uh, sharing our screen. And uh, we do the presentation. So with sound... Okay, share that. So let's go this now. I'm going to close this and start. Okay, so we're going to start from the slide beginning. So this is our, as I said, uh, consecutively 40th Global Connectivity Conference uh, on real estate. We're very proud that. We continue to have <clears throat> engagement and uh, connectivity between our members. So the goal of Realty Coffee Talk is to create connectivity, to increase awareness, building consumer confidence in real estate, and promote good ethics and business practices. And the word is in your hand because I am also CIPS not approved instructor so I am conducting a seminar with the Real Institute of Canada in, in Toronto uh, on 22nd and 23rd July. Those are core courses. And why we do this? Because Global Real Estate Professional Network is a, a, is a global connectivity network that create opportunity for us to get to know each other, build a relationship, and facilitate business cooperation amongst uh, the members. And me being a host, uh, my goal is to ignite the spirit of connectivity and cooperation within my global real estate professional network. More, we have a more confidence to make a refer uh, to our clients to CIPS in their respective jurisdiction. I recently make a refer to uh, South Carolina to one of my CIPS partners. So we have professionally we are professionally governed by the highest professional standard of practice as CIP designee of NAR. And that's our power. And this is a geographic map of the area where I provide services in the GTA through Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. And I share with you the data. So on the screen, you are seeing a, a snapshot year over year summary for 23 April, 24 April, and 24 May. You can see comparison that uh, in sales, we were minus five in April 24 as compared to 23. And we are now minus in sale 21.7% as compared to 23 May. New listing, we have more listing 47.2% as compared to 23. And now we have 21.1% as compared to new listing as compared to 23 in May. Active listing, we show 74.4% active listing in April, and which has increased now to 83.3% active listing in, uh, in May, compared to May 23 and 24. Average price in April 24, was 1,156,167. And in 20 and May, it has increased 
1,165,691 as compared to April. But if you look at the May last year, we are minus 2.5. So we are going to see how average price is going to matter in the next few months. Uh, Bank of Canada has in reduced the interest rate by quarter point, but that didn't help much. Rates are still high and affordability is a big issue. No listing day on market in May was 19 days, so 90 days. It's the same thing in, in April. But as compared to May last year, it's 35.7% more, taking longer. Average day on the market in April was 20 day in 24, is 28 day is same. But if you compare it to May, is 40% more time. Let me move this on the top. Now, this is a comparison. It will give you about the detach on. So April and May, if you look at this figure right here, we have Toronto is 416 and 905 are other areas, including Mississauga, where my office is. So we treat this as the average price based on the total transaction 33175 in April and 3238 in, in May as compared to before. So you can see the average price here is 1,506,000 675 in May, and it was 1,516,070 in um, in um, in in April. So you can see a little bit decline there. If you look at the SAMI, let's use an average between the two locations is 1.1 1 .1, 1, 1, in April and is 1173,000 1,173,817 so you can see the semi detached price has increased where the detached home price has gone down down home if we look at the town home, average price is 949,838 in April and is 947,158. So slightly gone down. If you look at the condo in April, it was 738, 728,067. And if you look at this here, it's gone up 730. 819. So there is an increase in some part, except the detached home. Uh, there is a, a decline in townhome and detached home, but the price of semi and condo has gone up as a base on average. These are average prices because they are cumulative based on number of transactions for that period. Price of each unit depends on when is, uh, where is property located. And you need to consult with the real estate profession in your jurisdiction to come up with your price. So these are generic prices to make sure that you are not relying on this, but this is a kind of benchmark, but we have to check property location size, configuration, lot, lot size, how, how good that property is as compared to the sole property. So your real estate profession will create a document and give you, a, after creating is basically a CMA, 
competitive market analysis to give you an idea how much value your property is. So year over year change, you can see that a detached home is showing a positive in April 1.8. But if you look at the to May, uh, there's a minus 3.2. So we went down as compared to May to May, year over year. So if you look at the SAMI, in Toronto was 2.9% and, and other area minus 2.6 so averages 0.3%. That's the average price change. But if you look at the on May information, if you look at here is minus two. So Toronto was positive, but 905 area. I'm giving you example of Missaga, Oakville, Milton, Brampton. These are 905 area on the west side of Toronto. So that's where the 905 is located. So if you look at the town hall, we are also three point, minus 3.7 and uh, average price. And on to May, we are minus 5.6. So if you're looking at the condo apartment, positive in 416, negative in nine, uh, uh, 907, overall is 0 0.6. But if you look at the May report, we are minus 2.4. So we are minus in 416 in May, and we are minus in, in uh, 905 area. So this average forecast is showing uh, growth in 25, 24 going to be better than 23. Let's talk about the figures here. So these are the sales activity. In Canada, you can see that Canada-wide, their annual projection uh, says activity forecast is 10.5% increase as compared to 23. Their projection for 25 is 7.8% across Canada. So we are located in Ontario. This is where the, we are located. So they are saying is 12.6% 12 12.6% increase in, in sales activity in 24 and 7.4 in 25. And these are sales activities. So if you look at this is a forecast average price. So 24 average price is projected or forecasted by Canadian Real Estate Association 4.9% in 24. And in 2025, they're projecting 7%. That's a price based on federally. <clears throat> now, please note that this information may not include the private sales, does not include new construction. This is through MLS system. So if we look in Ontario, they are thinking about or forecasting 2.4% increase in Ontario as compared to 23. And Ontario 25, 25 it looks 7.2% increase. So 25% is going to, uh, uh, sorry, 7.25% is a change in average price. So it's coming back. Okay, so they give you a little idea What's happening, these are other provinces, if any of you need uh, the forecasting. Now, if you have not seen this, I'm just going to go quick, quickly. Necessary step to, to achieve, uh, achieve success. Final buying tips. Single home are not allowed to be sold to non-resident. If you are a resident, even on a work permit, you can now buy the property. But remember, there is a non-speculation, non-resident speculation tax, which is 25% by the Ontario government. By giving that 
you poke a hole in your financial capacity to buy a property. But you have to consult with a with an accountant and lawyer. Basically, we prepare a checklist that we share to people know what's going on, how much it costs to close. Average price is based on the average price. You can you need about two percent of 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 the purchase price as a closing cost. So, and also we are able to share data with each other. We're cooperating and we prepare, and you always need to have to prepare estimate of closing costs, which I'm telling you approximately 2%. But if you buy a property in 416, which is 905 area, then you have to add additional land transfer tax, then costs will go to 3.5 or more uh, based on purchase price. But that's strictly buying the property in Ontario. Now, consent to advertise is required. So when we are advertising properties on behalf of a client or cooperating with someone, we need to have a consent to advertise. We have a world's largest MLS system and we are able to advertise uh, properties from, from our refer partners. So we enter into a refer partner agreement that defines the fees and when we are making referral. Uh, the, so it's very important and the responsibility of uh, uh, our CIPS partners that uh, your jurisdiction is where your license is. So when you are trying to do business outside of your jurisdiction, you need to engage with your with your client and this uh, and also your CIPS partner. Buying a process, just the process farm buying tips for Ontario. Let's example that you send me a, a person who qualifies and he, he or she wants to buy a property. So you select your partner, so I'm your partner. Now, we search properties, we make, uh, show the property to the client, we check everything, and we prepare an offer, conditional offer. So conditional um, normal cases, I'm talking about generically, is to satisfy the mortgage appraisal uh, to get the financing and inspection condition. So make sure the property is uh, good property, Appraised value is good, inspection conditions are met, and we form up the deal. Then we send the APS, Agreement of Purchase Sale, and relevant documents to the lawyer for completion of a transaction. And um, lenders send funds to the buyer's lawyer. That means if a foreign buyer is borrowing money, money exchange hand through the lawyer. One gives you the paper, the other one will take the money. The lawyer will uh, transfer the deed and register mortgage. There are two steps. Deed is ownership transfer, the mortgage is a charge because if, if a client buys with a mortgage. And all transaction will require a title insurance. It costs about $1,000 depending on the value of the property, it may go a little bit higher because nobody wants to take a risk with them. And this is very important. Against the fraud. Important things to remember again as the foreign buying tips, estimated closing cost. So you have to estimate the closing cost Non-residents and foreign buyers pay speculation tax 25%. Withhold the money to get clearance from CRA for sales tax. So if you are seller, you, you will get clearance from, from CRA because your lawyer will hold the money. Consultation with chartered accountant is required because there are tax implications for the buyers. So we move this screen here. And consultation with the barristers and solicitors is required 
because there are certain rules and laws that you have to comply with. Foreign buyer can buy property and secure mortgage. Now, there are restrictions from the federal government to buy a single up to six unit properties. Anything beyond can be purchased. So this is important that you talk to a lawyer. Okay. So the buyer buying real estate is not related to immigration. It is a separate process. Uh, LK, do you have any questions? So all recording of a real estate uh, and mortgage learning center where we have all the recording of all the episodes that we air for global community conferences and also mortgage and real estate brokerage. We have, please visit rentycoffeetalk.com and subscribe to my to learn more about real estate and mortgages, please visit Realty Coffee Talk and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So this is our Global Real Estate Profession Network on CIPS. Please register to make sure you are a member so we share information. Our 21st Global Connectivity Conference will be held on Thursday, 25th July at 1 p.m. Hello, Joseph. I just finished the conversation, uh, do the presentation, so how are you? Joseph, can you, can you speak? How are you? What happened, you guys, nobody showed up except uh, Alki and now you. Oh my goodness. You know what happened? I had an interview going on today. Yeah? Yeah. I'm teaching and interviewing. <laughs> wow, wonderful. Yeah. I hope you did well. So I did some statistic and some some you know presentation to make sure that uh if you guys are updated, you can see the watch, but uh it's very surprising people so you know how, how much, lots of people accepted it. And, oh. through, and maybe it's, it's the summer, I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's before the holiday, and a yeah. lot of people, I guess, are packing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 4th of July. So uh, congratulations to you uh, before 4th of uh, July, Independence Day. And uh, so, so what's happening to you? in your area? Well, it's it's the same. Um, we're very active. Uh, the town is doing extremely well. We've got mm -hmm. a lot of development down on the river. More apartments are being built and um, actually resold than I've ever seen. So people are still building, but there is transactions within the last, uh, those that were built within the last five years. So the pricing are, is still continuing to go up. Uh, yeah. There's the demand. Um, rental rates are, I would say, somewhat static. I don't think they're going up as fast as they were. They're staying where, what we call, um, uh, they're catching up, if you would. Yeah. Uh, well, the town is doing extremely well, though. Yeah. Well, uh, since I mentioned last time, I got my builder license now. I am right now working with some partners, uh, you know, the developers. So we'll, we're we going to start construction of the projects very soon, hopefully. I need to get a contractor's license as well. 
You know, I've been practicing law and contracting without a license for 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See, here uh, in Ontario, is prohibited to build a house unless you're licensed. Right. So we, so we can do that. So, and especially me, because I have a real estate brokerage, I have a mortgage brokerage, and also now buy the license. So I have to be in compliance to everything. So and now I'm a little ex excited. Uh, my son is going back to Kansas University, Medical University, Missouri. Good, good. After, I think he, he will be there either during this weekend, maybe celebrate the 4th of July in, in Kansas City, Missouri. Good. So he's, he, should, he should be coming here at 3 o'clock at home. Ready to go for his, uh, you know, his second year uh, in medical school. Yeah. So, you what know, are you doing with your mortgage company? Are you doing commercial or just residential? No, my focus is uh, a commercial, but we do residential, but the mostly people with alternate lending, with their trouble, lots of people got into trouble and uh, because they can't afford it. And I'm telling you, it's not cheap. It's really expensive now because the the income has not increased and value of the property has gone up. So <clears throat> we're expecting that um, interest rate will go further down, uh, maybe in July. And, but unfortunately, the inflation went up again, 2.9 from 2.7. Yeah. So we don't know what how the bank will react to that, but the problem is people are struggling right now. <clears throat> I I was showing the screen. Um, maybe I show you that again uh, if you don't mind. That uh, our new listing went from seventy four to eighty three percent. Wow. In April was seventy four. And now it's 83%. So it's a buyer market right now. Someone smart enough who has gotten the funds and they can buy it now, bargain it. And they probably have to hold maybe a year or so and then interest rates start coming back. But right. it's never going to go back the way it was before. Because I had a mortgage, 1.69, uh, uh, I have to do some little bit uh, refinancing, so I have to let it go because I have to send money for my son. So now I got 4.17, and I can see double more than double the payment that I was making. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. So I expected that, it, and I took only two years because my renewal was coming up, so I said, well, you know, maybe he completed school by that time, and then uh, you know, sure. be okay. So you, uh, that's what you do. But uh, so, what else? Anything special you want to share? Because I think. We well, I to... don't have anything in particular, but I, I'm, I'm very happy with the way things are turning out in in the southeast. Uh, we're we're stable. Um, I I was kind of taken back this morning when I read about. Uh, some of the retail sectors uh, going through some um, consolidation. They were talking about Walgreen. And they were also talking about Pizza Hut. So we're we're going to see some uh, space uh, presented to the market. And I kind of hate that. I remember uh, Eckert's and a bunch of drugstores going through it many years ago. And now yeah. we're, it looks like we're going to re-enter that. We're all these drugstores put a, a location on every corner. Now it looks like they're going to consolidate. What's happening is because of this technology transformation has created opportunities. And, and now, except that you have to personally meet somebody, everything is can be delivered. My, I, I take medicine. My medicines are delivered to my house now. I told them, I don't want to come. You yeah. want my business. Deliver it. Yeah. And, and of course, they, the, the Walgreens, they 
tried to get in other businesses. Uh, they got out of kind of the what the typical drugstore, and they became a small department store. And uh, you could buy everything. And of course, now they're competing with dollar generals and, and dollar trees and everybody else in the marketplace. Yeah. It's a tough, tough thing to have that type of convenience um, shopping. Um, it's a tough business. Yeah. We, we, you know, we have a small retailers, but now, like Walmart, they, you have all grocery. Now we go to Walmart for grocery. You're right. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to a traditional uh, grocery, uh, store. grocery stores, because they have everything. So, you know, one way is working, one way, other way is not. And yeah, it it's kind of like it's repivoting every every two or three years. Yeah. So there is a lot of uh, space available for the commercial side. Only thing that we have a shortage is warehousing. warehousing Isn't that true, Paul? And small manufacturing to go with that. Yeah. I'm looking and, for some right now. Yeah. So that's a little challenge. I have right, uh, recently... Um, a, a client is in uh, South Carolina. I make a referral to uh, Andrea Caper uh, uh, to help her to find the property you're looking for commercial. So which state are you, uh, Joseph? I work in Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama. Okay. Uh, so if you know where Chattanooga is, it's in the southeast corner of Tennessee, yeah. right on the Georgia line not far from the Alabama line. Yeah, so I, I think- We're not far from the North Carolina line either. Yeah. There was, a, he was also looking for some commercial possibility in North Carolina. And- uh, uh, His name, he needs any help. Yeah. So let me- I'm everywhere. That. Yeah. Now I'm gonna take you up on doing that video one day. I'm going to get a better haircut and go on video. <laughs> so when are you ready? You let me know. We can set up a time. We'll get recorded. Actually, it's not the haircut. I'm, I'm going to have to let it grow out. <laughs> <laughs> I have to cut my I You know what? When I was with the youth score for years, um, and I always have no sideburn. You can see that. <laughs> when my hair grows, I, I go crazy. Something is wrong. So I go cut my I said, why don't you keep some hair? I said, no. I need to have a fresh hair. And, and when you are cut your hair, even though I'm almost 72 now, you look young, man. It That's keeps right. You going. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Keep you young. I keep you going. And that's what I believe. Yeah. You have to get ready, you have to prepare, you dress up. And I see lots of our friends, they'll take it easy. Yeah. I try to prepare. I have a couple of things, meeting some interesting things happening. And uh, so I say, well, I need to prepare myself and in a mood that I'm going out doing business. And that's, that's right. For sure. If you don't do that, what happens is you become a lazy. You're right. And you become lazy and then you lose your circulation. And then Excellent. this time, you know, you're not anywhere. Yeah. And this is why it's very important for all of us to continue. I don't know, whether, Alki, are you there or is just uh, you put on the computer? You're just leaving? Sorry? Well, she's, she's muted, but I don't know if she's up or not. Yeah. Now, so anyway, I... I Thank you very much for joining. Any well, I'm sorry I was late, but it's always a joy to see you. Yeah, thank you very much. You want to give when me is a your next? Up? When is your next uh, meeting? That will be on uh, July. Uh, July. Let me look at that. Uh, it'll be calendar, and that next will be on 25th. 25th July. Okay. One, one. And I am bringing some uh, specialists to do some presentation. Good. And I did a, a, a very amazing uh, um, episode on, uh, uh, I think, about um, what they call uh, affordability. Affordable housing? You know, it's called bridging the affordability gap. Oh, I like that. So 
let me see if I can uh, quickly show you the screen and then you can go and uh, look for that. Okay, give me one second. Yeah, brother. Right. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off. Okay. Uh, well, one thing one thing about it, you'll shake all night. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so can you see my screen? Well, great, great. Okay. okay. Yeah, I Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Yeah, I see it. Okay, give me see. You see this here? I, I think well, some, somebody yeah. just arrived that I think right now. See this here? Yeah. Bridging the uh, bridging the housing affordability gap. So when okay. you go there, I think just somebody just subscribe that. So when you are here, always click on video right here. It brings the latest one on the front. Gotcha. Thank and you. Then, uh, well, now we have 433 episodes. And, you know, this is 13 last one that we have so many people. This time only you, me, and uh, Alki. So please subscribe to this. You will love it. There's a lo lot of good topics. And, you know, we have our business in the United States and Canada is the same. We follow the same strict ethical professional sure. standards, licensing requirements, jurisdiction issues, and make sure we are well prepared. Sure. So there are very good topics in there. That Well, thank you so much. I'll sure thank I'll you. take advantage. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And thank have you. And we'll see you next time. Uh, see you in 30 days. Take, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.